Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Friends of a Free Iran Intergroup, FOFI. Uh, our seminar this afternoon is uh, geared towards discussing the issue of human rights in Iran. And for that reason, it's my great privilege to welcome uh, to our meeting again today, Mrs. Maryam Rajavi, President-elect of the National Council for Resistance in Iran. It's always a great pleasure to welcome you to the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Rajavi. Let me say a few words to set the scene. Catherine Ashton's ill-judged visit to Tehran last month to appease the mullahs fell apart almost before she stepped off the aircraft as news emerged of Israel intercepting a ship from Iran carrying dozens of long-range surface-to-surface rockets, assault weapons, and hundreds of thousands of bullets destined for terrorists linked with the Iranian regime in Gaza. Iran is the world's leading exporter and bankroller of terrorists, and their cat-and-mouse attempts to persuade Ashton and others that they have no intention of producing nuclear weapons is farcical. It was even more ironic that Baroness Ashton set foot on Iranian soil on Saturday the 8th of March, International Women's Day. Iran's repression of women is globally renowned. In fact, on the 4th March, the regime hanged a 25-year-old woman who had been held in prison since she was a teenager. She left behind a 10-year-old daughter. Another young woman of 26 who has been in prison for the past seven years is about to be hanged because she resisted being raped. Indeed, the Mullah's main target of repression for many years has been women many of whom have been systematically raped, tortured, and executed in Iranian prisons. I think you should all understand that Mrs. Rajavi's own sister, when she was pregnant, along with her husband, was executed by the mullahs. An Iranian woman has half the value of a man, according to the medieval Sharia law, her evidence in a Sharia court only counts for half of that of a man's evidence. But it's not only the women who suffer. Iran is a serial abuser of human rights and one of the leading proponents of the death penalty. In addition, Iran is the key supporter of the brutal Assad regime in Syria and regularly exports arms and military personnel through Iraq to bolster Assad's genocidal war against his own people. Iran has also started exporting arms to its neighboring Shia uh, puppet state of Iraq, where the viciously sectarian and corrupt Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki uses these weapons supplied by the mullahs in bloody attacks on the predominantly Sunni population of Fallujah and Ramadi, where hundreds of innocent civilians have been killed. As Baroness Ashton sat in negotiations with the new smiling and apparently moderate President Rouhani of Iran, perhaps she may have reflected on the fact that at least 700 people have been hanged, many of them in public, since he came to power less than nine months ago. A few weeks ago, the Mullah's Supreme Court approved a sentence to blind a man and cut off his ear and his nose. 150 people have been hanged in Iran since the beginning of this year. Perhaps Baroness Ashton was able to ask how President Rouhani reconciles his moderation with such barbarities. Ashton's visit will inevitably be used as propaganda by the mullahs, who will assume that her presence denotes that the EU is not at all concerned about these barbaric hangings and serial abuse of human rights. Indeed, their contempt for the West was well illustrated last week 
when they appointed a known assassin and murderer as their new ambassador to the UN. Sadly, the EU High Representative's visit will have brought no comfort to the oppressed masses of Iranian citizens, nor will it have in any way helped to promote our core European values of freedom, democracy, human rights, women's rights, uh, law and justice, who the evil Mullah regime simply ignore. The prospects for a nuclear deal with Iran are zero, and Baroness Ashton's attempts to wave a bit of paper in Brussels while declaring peace in our time is at its best fatuous and at its worst a dangerous illusion. Last week our resolution on Iran was passed in the European Parliament which was much weaker than it should have been. However, the Iranian authorities from the president of the Majlis and even the foreign minister to Tehran's Friday prayer, prayer leader took turns in attacking the European Parliament and the EU for passing this resolution. They became quite hysterical and in fact have now cancelled a proposed visit by Iranian politicians to Strasbourg in protest, so every cloud has a silver lining. Indeed, the Brigadier General who commands the Bajish the Mullah's Gestapo thugs declared that MEPs, all of us who passed the resolution last week, we are worse than four-legged animals. And he demanded to know how dare we in Europe call for an end to executions in Iran. He told us to mind our own damned business. So this clearly shows first the vulnerability of the regime and their unwillingness to listen when it comes to human rights. They are afraid that the climate of fear may be lifted. Second, it shows the regime's complete lack of tolerance. And I think it's obvious to all of us that if we had stood firm from the outset, they would have retreated on many fronts. Nor will Ashton's visit to Tehran have stopped the Mullahs from piling pressure on Nouri al-Maliki to kill or hand over the 3,000 Iranian dissidents in Camp Liberty. Since the Americans reneged on their pledge to guarantee the safety of these defenseless refugees, they have been harassed, psychologically tortured, deprived of food and medicine and basic necessities. They have been bombed, shot, handcuffed and executed. We've seen endless hand-wringing by the West and pathetic calls for Maliki to hold those responsible to account. That's like uh, asking King Herod to take charge of the nursery. It seems now that the West has washed its hands of the bloodbath in Iraq. Distracted by Syria and Crimea, they no longer care that the Shiite fundamentalist sectarian government run by Nouri al-Maliki is reducing the predominantly Sunni cities of Fallujah and Ramadi to rubble, killing and maiming hundreds of men, women and children daily under the pretext that they are terrorists. But I have a message for Ashton and for the 28 foreign ministers of the EU. You have failed to stop Bashir al-Assad from massacring tens of thousands of his own citizens. You have failed even to prevent the annexation of Crimea by Vladimir Putin. Don't you think that after this catalogue of failures, it would be nice to score a major victory by rescuing the 3,000 people in Camp Liberty? Would you not sleep more soundly in your beds at night knowing that you had saved 3,000 lives Think about it. You can achieve this breakthrough at the stroke of a pen. All it takes is courage, and the world is watching to see whether or not you are mice or lions. Ladies and gentlemen, I have led the Friends of a Free Iran Intergroup for many years, and it has been a great privilege to work with people of the magnitude of Mrs. Rajavi, who embodies all of the characteristics of sound leadership, boundless energy and great courage. But it's also been a privilege to work with, with all of you 
the supporters and friends of the movement who seek nothing more than the restoration of democracy, freedom, justice, and respect for human rights in Iran. Let me close by remembering the words of Victor Hugo. Nations like stars are entitled to eclipse. All is well, provided the light returns and the eclipse does not become endless night. Dawn and resurrection are synonymous. The reappearance of the light is the same as the survival of the soul. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Iran has suffered a long period of darkness. The light of liberty has truly been eclipsed. But the Mullah's days are numbered. The reappearance of the light is imminent. In fact, we can see the first faint glimmers of dawn breaking through the blackness. And the torchbearers are the 3,000 brave people in Camp Liberty and their supporters around the world. I count myself privileged to say that I am with them every step of the way. I am Ashrafi.